Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Richard Ayuadi. In the news this week, realising that his words are failing to get through, Donald Trump's lawyer goes back to basics to explain the impeachment process. <laughs> <laughs> At the funeral of an American watermelon farmer, a video is played showing his final moments. Hey! 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 And Doctor Who fans are thrilled with Jodie Whittaker's performance as the Doctor, but less impressed by the new TARDIS. On Ian's team tonight is a comedian who says he constantly worries about everything. It's great to have him here and he shouldn't panic. I'm sure he locked the front door. Please welcome <laughs> John Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a former government minister who pulled out of a previous episode of this show and was replaced by her own handbag. Um, but unfortunately, this week the handbag has cancelled. So <laughs> please welcome Nikki Morgan, MP. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Mm. Paul and Nikki, yes. Have a look at this. Uh, yes, Theresa May with some horses. And, oh, Mr. Ms. Juncker. Mr. Juncker. Bit uh, of dancing. Yes, this is uh, forward-looking Britain. Where we're we going? <laughs> and uh, probably two members of the DUP. It is. There's Mr. Gove. There we are. That's how a man dresses when his wife doesn't see him leave the house. <laughs> So there we are. Yeah. Did that satisfy you? Yeah, that's what I have on the car. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Um, well, this is the news that people are still talking about Brexit. Oh, are they? They're still... Unbelievable. You're not, though, are you? Cos you're not allowed no, to. No, I don't talk about Brexit ever. But we are apparently approaching uh, a critical couple of weeks, although we're told now that maybe there won't be agreement next week and we're going to be knocked into December and or November, December. And how will you vote? The Chief Whip would like to know that answer, to answer that question too. You know, I just the public might be vaguely interested. <laughs> <laughs> vaguely, vaguely. Let's Vague. move, yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Well, it depends, doesn't it, what the, uh, what the deal is that comes back from, uh, from Europe. If you hadn't made the joke about the leather trousers, life could have been different. <laughs> How many times have you said that before in your life? <laughs> <laughs> that time you said it to Jim Morrison. Morrison yeah. <laughs> Will you resign the whip at some point if that looks like it's happening? Will you leave? Will you make a bold stand? Well, I'm not, I'm not planning, I'm not going to give away my game plan on all of this, to, at, this at this particular stage. So, stage. no, then. <laughs> Surely appearing on this programme is the first step to a life outside of politics. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. <laughs> That's been a One stab... Can only hope. Yeah. yeah. It's been a stab a long time ago. There's a poll this week apparently saying that 60% of people want the government to get on with Brexit. Well, according to a company called Delta Poll, 60% of voters polled agree with the statement, I no longer care how or when we leave the EU, I just want it all over and done with. Sort of dignitas, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When's the appointment? Yeah. What is this order? What do you want? Do you want it over with or do you want it fought out? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Open the box! <laughs> <laughs> Take the money! <laughs> Just glad to see divided Britain yeah. in action. <laughs> that was a second referendum. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> what has Jean-Claude Juncker uh, been doing to try and lighten the mood? Uh, mimicking Theresa May's awkward dance steps. That's exactly right. Let's yeah. look at it. <laughs> Well, was he mocking Theresa May or was he merely arsehole? <laughs> it could be both. Yes, um, because he doesn't like the British media making jokes about him potentially being drunk. Yes. But what's worrying is if, if he's permanently drunk and we still can't negotiate anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Theresa May is apparently going to put pressure on the Cabinet to get them to compromise on an even softer Brexit deal. How will she do that? Haven't the DUP just essentially taken over? Do you want to know how TV funny man and occasional BBC political correspondent Norman Smith explained the situation? I'd love to see it. OK. <laughs> if you vote down my deal, you could end up with no deal, which would be profoundly damaging for your constituents. So her strategy is to hope at the last minute all these different groups go... Buck, 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 buck. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The Daily Mail, not a newspaper, 
which would try to frighten its readers. No. Um, have been outlining the nightmare scenario Britain faces if we leave the EU without any deal at all. Um, shall we play a game I've based on this nightmare scenario? Yeah. Called... Yeah. Nightmare Scenario. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a thing and then you tell me what's going to happen to it <laughs> after a no-deal Brexit. Fine. Fingers yeah. on buzzers. Right, I'm ready. I'm up for this. Fuel. Non-existent. None. None at all. Less fuels. We'll be pushing cars and training chickens to push them. Yeah. <laughs> With Norman Smith as the chicken leader, leading them on. Next. <laughs> Medicines. Stockpiled. Yeah. No, no. No, no medicines. No medicines. No medicines. No. What I have on the card is none. None. <laughs> none. I'll tell Matt Hancock. OK. Yeah. Power. Power? Electricity? Yes. Won't be any. None. None. <laughs> we will own, we'll have to rely on breath. <laughs> Sat-nav. Non-existent. It will not work in Europe, the sat-nav. Oh. But neither will we, so... <laughs> <laughs> what have Sir John Major and Gordon Brown been teaming up to do? They've both agreed on something. Yes. Ex-Tory um, Prime Minister and ex-Labour Prime Minister. They've both said universal credit is a disaster that doesn't work. No. Thus putting them in line with the entire British public. Mm. <laughs> They've been criticising the government's proposals which could see households losing £2,400 a year. Downing Street said... No one moving on to universal credit would lose out, and that the nationwide rollout next year would proceed gradually in order to identify difficulties. In the same way, that if you're sort of driving towards a brick wall and you accelerate slowly, you gradually become aware of the impending difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> the fuel will run out long before you get to the brick wall. <laughs> Who else was surprisingly critical of the policy? Jeremy Corbyn. I said surprisingly. John Pertwee. <laughs> <laughs> it's Esther McVeigh. The Secretary of State for Work and Pension, she said yesterday, some people will be worse off. Yes. But she said that Ian Duncan Smith had done a lot of hard work, so it couldn't possibly be wrong. Wasn't he so useless he got sacked as Tory leader? I was at the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that's my favourite poll so far? <laughs> <laughs> What's the Michael Gove dump news? He says that if you haven't got stuff, you should go to the tip and get it. That is right. In a way, he wants people to be able to buy stuff from rubbish dumps. It is an extraordinary policy, isn't it? <laughs> Austerity's <laughs> over, <laughs> live off a tip. It's what? already a thing, though. I mean, I don't want to sound like I sit at home all day watching daytime telly, but there's a programme called Money for Nothing where they go to the tip Great and they get well. stuff. Yeah, it is. <laughs> He's just watching telly now that he's not busy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's coming up with ideas. What we should do is allow people to buy homes at auction and then do them up over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brexit, where we've got to the stage where the government is just dotting the I's and crossing the T's of the words, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> For people who... Didn't know all the Brexit details, the I newspaper printed a handy QA starting with the question, Why is Northern Ireland a problem? <laughs> Which they explained on pages 2 to 98. <laughs> Last weekend, Remain campaigners marched their dogs through London calling for a wooferendum. <laughs> all went well until a massive dispute broke out over what to do with the Irish border collie. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and John, take a look at this. That's just people in Russia who've extended their tourist visas to The Hague. And a nana with a phone. Is she the actual grandmother of one of the spies or just an elderly Russian lady who might have been? That was actually Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> he is fantastic, isn't His he? comeback. <laughs> he never went away. <laughs> well, this is news that Alexander Mishkin, the second Salisbury assassin, has had his identity revealed this week. Yes, they found out he's not a tourist either. Um, Putin had previously denied meeting the two Russian assassins, but um, what do we know now that Putin had given him? The Order of Lenin or something? It's not far off. The it's... Order of Stalin? <laughs> that is further off. That is further off. <laughs> well... Was it the Order of Corbyn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that.
I'm not on Twitter. You're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> that gesture was the closest I've seen you look to Liam Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> um, Putin gave Mishkin the Hero of the Russian Federation Award. Mm. Mm. For services to tourism. <laughs> <laughs> How do we know that he received this award? His oh. grandmother That's right. ah. was yes. so proud of the photograph mm. that she showed it round her home town. This is true. Uh, Mishkin's grandmother has a photograph of President Putin shaking Mishkin's hand and giving him the award. Mm. As you say, the picture has been seen by everybody in the village. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the grandmother now? Does anyone know? Disappeared, hasn't she? She's had a holiday in Salisbury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she yeah. loves cathedrals. She loves cathedrals, yeah. yeah. Yes. It's not been a great week for Russian intelligence. Um, how else have they become a laughing stock this week? Well, the four of them were caught in The Hague trying to check up on the weapons inspectorate, the chemical weapons inspectorate, which was looking into the Scripple case. Yes. And they just turned up outside and they were trying to tap into the Wi Fi. <laughs> they tried everything one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> how did they end up being caught? Gove went through their bins. <laughs> And yet, that is not far from the truth. <laughs> so, according to the Express... <laughs> ..they kept a receipt which showed they had taken a taxi from the GRU <laughs> office um, in Moscow to the airport so that they could later claim it back on expenses. <laughs> um, and also, they thought ahead and put all of their rubbish in a plastic bag and took it with them. <laughs> Lovely. Very good. Um, but then they accidentally left it all in their hire car. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Michael Gove to discover that. <laughs> it's like they're being almost deliberately crap now, isn't it? To sort of... All I'm saying is, if this was an episode of Midsummer Murders, <coughs> this would be about halfway through, and you'd think, well, it, it can't be them, because there's half an hour left. <laughs> in the light of all of this, um, where was Putin pictured visiting this week? Wrestling a cow in the mountains. Yes. Good. No. Oh. He was, he was pictured <laughs> visiting an apple orchard. And to prove that he can make anything look sinister, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to know the power of a man, look at the expression of another man while he sniffs an apple. <laughs> <laughs> that is a man thinking, oh, Christ, I hope he likes that apple. <laughs> And we also learned this week that in the event of war, British defence chiefs are planning what if Putin launches a military attack on the West? Cyber attack. That's right. Defence chiefs revealed this week that the cyber capabilities allow them to turn out the lights in the Kremlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's hope they don't have torches. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we don't do it during the day. <laughs> <laughs> This is the identification of the second Russian Salisbury spy. It's feared that the grandmother is now being interrogated by the Russian security services. Still, nice for her to have some company for a change. <laughs> According to The Sun, Putin has ordered an investigation into the spy bungle. <laughs> we can only thank God that Jeffrey from Rainbow died. <laughs> 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 and so to round two, the jigsaw of news. Fingers on Buzz's teams. This is royal wedding number two of the year. Yes. According to the mother of the bride, we're all pronouncing the bride's name wrong. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. Oh. Um, do you know how you should pronounce the bride's name? Eugenics. <laughs> <laughs> E-U-Genie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we could do with one of those. You never give up, you Remainers, do you? Yeah. <laughs> According to Sarah Ferguson, most people say Eugenie or Eugenie, when in fact it should be you Johnny, you Johnny, you Johnny. Except in Scotland, where it's you Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you Johnny. What's his I'm name again? Is it What's Jack it? Brookbank? Jack Brooksbank. Oh, right. we, have we got that right? Yep. Brooksbank. He's a tequila um, rep. You're right. He's a, well, he's a European brand manager. He's a rep. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's dishing out shots at the wedding. <laughs> he is related to Eugenie through Viscount Powercourt. Um, who, <laughs> who invented the first electric petrol station. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> What's the national mood been like? Euphoric. Or should that be... <laughs> 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 
people are less <laughs> than super pumped, seemingly. Yes. One winter local who preferred not to be named <laughs> questioned the cost, saying, why does she need to have an open-top carriage ride through the high street when she could have had the whole shebang in her garden? <laughs> <laughs> Away from the royal wedding, who's celebrating this week by not having a cake? Oh, the bakers in Northern Ireland? Yes. That... Didn't want to produce a cake with uh, respect gay marriage written on it, or support gay marriage, I think, was the actual wording. Well, you're, you're completely right. Ashes Bakery in Belfast, who uh, won their Supreme Court appeal over their refusal to bake a cake in support of gay marriage, a judge ruled that by baking the cake, the bakers would express an opinion which one does not hold. Uh, the Equality Commission spent £250,000 of public money on this case, but who could have saved them all that time and money? Mary Berry. <laughs> Ian. Ian could have done. Let's look at what Ian said four years ago on this programme. Four years ago on this programme? That's right. <laughs> this judgment ah. is yeah. probably going to be reviewed. Mm. Um, it is the equivalent of going into a Muslim-owned um, cake shop and saying, I'd like you to have a face of the prophet on the cake. You're open for business, make me the cake. Mm. Otherwise, it's against the law. So th this is creating quite a difficult area. It's freedom of expression versus freedom of religion. I should be on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Is there, is there a rush of non-Muslims to get cakes with Mohammed on the front, on the top? Well, it, it is the principle. I mean, Peter Tatchell put it equally well. He said it's the equivalent of telling two gay bakers you must bake a cake which says, I think gay marriage is an abomination. Put that on. People don't have to. The freedom not to say something is part of the freedom to say something. The irony, of course, is that everybody's seen this cake and if, yeah. they'd, if they'd baked it and it had just been eaten, that would have been it. <laughs> Who else has recently managed to cause offence with a cake other than you? I don't know. What's the answer to, and what was the question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just review the whole show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an anonymous mum who iced this unfortunate cake to wish her son good luck at university. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered what that little symbol meant. <laughs> There should really be a comma after luck. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there was a version of The Sound of Music that was playing at the Sydney Opera House, and a lot of the Australians I knew when I was over there at the time found it very funny because it was a New Zealander playing the head nun. And at one point, her line should have been, what is it you can't face? And be... <laughs> <laughs> but they pronounce their vowels differently over there. <laughs> This is the royal wedding of the month. <laughs> <laughs> and the Daily Mail printed an A to Z of the royal wedding, the most consulted letters being D, do I get a day <laughs> off work, and N, no. <laughs> <laughs> Prince George will be a page boy at the ceremony on Friday, which means he's missing a day of school. Such irresponsible parenting. I mean, if he doesn't pass his exams, what will he fall back on? <laughs> <laughs> in an article on the refurbishment of Buckingham Palace, it was revealed the Queen has 78 bathrooms. <laughs> While at that age, every room's a bathroom. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. Here's another one for you. It's the, the news that James Bond is never going to be uh, a woman, so never no. going to be played by a female actress. Yes. Maybe both are true. <laughs> yes, it is the news that James Bond will never be played by a woman. Who's, who's put the kibosh on a female? Uh, one Bond? of the producers, is it Barbara Broccoli? Barbara Broccoli. Yep. The long-term Bond producer, Barbara Broccoli, mm. he said, we don't have to turn male characters into women. Adding, he was written as a male character, and I think he'll probably stay as a male character. And Bond is male. He's a male character. <laughs> I guess he's male. <laughs> he's, what she's saying. Was Barbara Broccoli right to rule out a female Bond, what do you think? Well, he is a male character. <laughs> I'm not sure how this suddenly became news, um, but, yes, do you know? Well, because the new Doctor Who... Oh, right, yes. ..of course, has become... Is Jodie Whittaker is yes. playing the new Doctor Who. Very, very brilliantly, I have to say. Mm. I thought it was a great first episode. OK. So, um... Oh, look, somebody else probably <laughs> agrees with me. There Good. we are, you see. It's the first thing that's brought everyone together. <laughs> <laughs> so we heal a divided nation. Yes, it yep. can. Doctor Who. We all unite Sunday evening, sit round and, and watch the TV. Right. You two looking quite confused. Did you not watch it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought it was a children's programme. No. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> the unity was so short-lived. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who has changed gender. Mm. 
Um, in America, they have no problem with it. Um, but what did they have a problem with? <laughs> Pronunciation of certain familiar words to us, but not to them. That's oh, right. Yes. <laughs> During a recent interview, Jodie explained that she was born in Huddersfield and the American subtitler had uh, something of a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> Huddersfield. <clears throat> a really yeah. nice sofa. I expect she got it from a skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've hidden her mic well. That's what I like about mm. Yes. <laughs> Very glam. That's a sonic screwdriver. Ah, so you so have you watched the programme. Watch <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that there will never be a female James Bond. Some ten years after his sad death from prescription drugs, it's been revealed that Michael Jackson wanted to play James Bond which is somewhat tragic, given that his last words were, Doctor, no! <laughs> <laughs> um, time now for the odd one out round. Oh, you're teasing. It's just one between you. Oh, oh, blimey. Yes, that's right. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Your four are Banksy, Andy Murray, Thomas Jefferson and Kirsty Olsop. OK, so Banksy had a painting that was uh, at auction this week and, uh, rather brilliantly, it shredded itself once it had been sort of sold. So, it sort of, people just watched this sort of, you know, this painting just be shredded. And Kirsty Allsop was in the news recently. She had two, two sons, I think, or two children, anyway, mm -hmm. who were always on their mobile phones, so she took their phones and just smashed them up. So that's, so that's the sort of link, I suppose, is yes. being destroyed. Yeah. And I think Andy Murray, um, he dropped a trophy. Did he? Yeah. Okay, so that was an accidental destruction, whereas certainly Banksy and Kirsty Allsop, they were deliberate acts. And Thomas Jefferson, did he destroy something accidentally um, or damage something which he damaged deliberately? So uh, that would make uh, Andy Murray the odd one out because it was an accident. It's exactly right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all damaged something on purpose, except for Andy Murray, who did it by accident. We know that he broke a commemorative plate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they had a spare? Oh, they always carry a spare commemorative plate. Oh, of course. <laughs> Jefferson was yes. a huge Shakespeare fan. Yes. And in 1786, he and John Adams travelled to Stratford-upon-Avon to visit Shakespeare's house. Ah. John Adams described the tourist site there as small and mean. Um, so Jefferson decided to get his money's worth and take a souvenir by cutting a piece of wood from the chair where Shakespeare had supposedly sat. Ooh. It was a very special chair. Ooh. It was where Shakespeare polished his Coriolanus, <laughs> which means thank you. <laughs> um, as you said, Banksy, the 2006 artwork, Girl mm. with Balloon, was sold at Sotheby's for a million pounds. Yes. Um, it was shredded on completion of the sale. Um, shall we have a look at how that happened? Yes, I'm, I'm pretty never pleasing. saw it. I'd be intrigued. And set for 860 now. Yeah, if you can Apparently it's worth more now. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is worth more. That's, That's why the art world. <laughs> the buyer is uh, pretty happy. Um, because it has increased the value of the art. Um, art expert Joey Sire told The Telegraph, Banksy has added a minimum 50% to its value. Um, how did one owner of another Banksy try to double its value this week? <laughs> <laughs> it's a leading question. Set fire to it. Shredded it. Shredded it as well. Got a shredder out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hoping to double its value. <laughs> oh, dear. He wanted to imitate the artist's actions by slicing strips into his own Banksy print <laughs> with a Stanley knife. Um, unfortunately, it had the adverse effect and took the value of the print from £40,000 to £1. <laughs> <laughs> and that's if you chuck the knife in. Yeah. <laughs> what keeps getting damaged round Keith Tyson's house? Oh, this is the naked woman? Yes, his hedge. Keith Tyson's <laughs> hedge. Yes. From Sheffield, has cut his hedge into the shape of what he describes as a sexy goddess. Do you know what's his name, the hedge? Uh, Miranda. It's not far... Gloria. Gloria. Yeah. Gloria. According to Keith, he has to mend the hedge four or five times a year because drunk passers-by keep jumping on it and pretending to have sex with it. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look at Gloria? <laughs> I mean, you can't blame people, can you? <laughs> um, Seems like varicous veins. I don't want to point them out, but just... <laughs> <laughs> the hedge is a fun relaxation, says Keith. 
Um, it's not my serious work. <laughs> it just morphed into something as I wanted to make the lady as sexy as possible, which is difficult, as she is just a privet. <laughs> No, he's totally succeeded in my book. <laughs> it is the sexiest hedge I've ever seen. Can I say I'm not interested? <laughs> <laughs> Good, less of a cue. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Stationary Matters. And we start with, what a consequence of visiting the London Stationary Show? Loneliness. <laughs> I think that's a precondition. A renewed interest in envelopes. Close. A sudden urge to buy more pencils. Ah. <laughs> Pencilitis. Yeah. Pencils are good. As if that urge is sudden. Yeah. This is from Stationary Matters, which <clears throat> illustrates the article with this picture of a pristine empty diary. Here it is. That's uh, Sean Walsh's bookings for the next 18 months. <laughs> next, Fiona Bruce on time to read the news thanks to what? Uh, Bobby on the beat sort of rescued her. Yeah. The studio that we were about to use had some technical breakdown, so she had to rush to another studio, and uh, he got her there in time. Yep, police escort. There were contingency plans. Emily Maitlis was on standby while Nina Nana was the sound the police car made. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Watt's iconic status shows no signs of diminishing. God! Those pens that are like four different colours. You know, like that. You're flipping close. The Parker pen. The Parker pen. That's right. Mm. According to Statesbury mm. Matters, the Parker 51 remains popular with pen bloggers. Good people pen. who type about how much they love using <laughs> pens. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and John have two, <laughs> Paul and Nicky have ten. Mm. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Who's going to tell him we don't need a boat? <laughs> <laughs> and I leave you with news that, as Theresa May boards a fishing trawler to give a Brexit update, a suspicious character is spotted nearby. <laughs> After spending 14 days looking for the rare red-breasted kingfisher, there's disappointment for one bird watcher when he has to nip to the loo. <laughs> and in Benidorm, after finally making some progress in some tricky Brexit negotiations, Jean-Claude Juncker has a couple of drinks to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. A humorous look at the world of online vlogging in BBC Three's Please Like Series 1 and 2 box sets available online now. You know how they say it takes one to know one? If you're a success at playing Would I Lie to You, what does that say about you then? The new series starts next. <laughs>